Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm continuing on. So this will be my fourth one this morning, but I got to get back to the studio uh, doing some other work. So this will be my last one today. So I'm just going to use up some of these palette colors, which means I'm going to use a use up technique that I really like where I start putting down some pretty heavy color and playing around quite a bit with it. My same colors like I've you know done in the last uh, seven videos. There's Hansa Yellow, Naphtha Red Light, uh, Thalo Blue, Red, violet, black, and white. This is the six color set. I'm going to start out with my three quarter inch brush. I'm going to bring out a palette knife this time as well because we want to uh, do a little bit of palette knife work with this. I'm going to come down here. We're going to take a bit of black. This is my use it up, use up my palette type things. And then we'll add a bit of a gray, a little bit of yellow to it there. Nice, pretty color. We're going to add some extender to it. And I'm going to run this gray over so it's just slightly warm not really it's more it actually leans a little bit cool but it's going to go right over my my beige my brown color that i have here already and i'll take a little extender into my paper towel or water and just kind of run this through we're going to do a multicolored background here which uh, i like these kinds of backgrounds here so i'm going to push that color in let's take some uh Come right over here, some of this red and black, and a bit of this yellow into that, red, black, and yellow. Make some pretty colors that can go here into our background. We'll let, and we won't mix them up too well so that some of these colors come off like this, see? And this is how I love to, these, these types of paintings, really, people just love them. They go crazy over them sometimes. And you, you pick up all different kinds of colors into the backgrounds, you know. You can do it really, uh, you know, start warming it up like I am here, you know, getting it warm. Using the knife here, just getting some of this background movement like this. This is the Liquitex number no. 5 uh, painting knife. And again, like all the links, everything, if you go over to um, the... Uh, the uh, video descriptions and stuff or over to the dance and art studio dot com you can uh, you'll find the links over to our Amazon site and we put into our Amazon site everything that I use so you can see that so see you get some beautiful sets of colors doing it like that we can uh, I think maybe I'll spark this one today with some light cool blues or blue violets that might be kind of pretty and this is what I like to do I just love to try things now this will this will grab you because it's a sparking color it's a different color it's to putting the cools right here into the uh, right in conflicting with the warms and stuff so you get some nice contrasts here of these colors coming through so well, I like it it's kind of like a a little bit of a breath of fresh air of the sky kind of color coming through with because sometimes in your um really warm warm colors you know they can feel very heavy and uh so you can get some cools in like that and just kind of spark that all up let's get just a bit more of that violet violet maybe a little heavier of a violet and pull that down boy is that different and again, you can use your brush if something gets a little bit too off or something like that. Just use your brush, pull through, and that will start the uh, blending process between the two, which will really soften out that tone. So you still get a little bit of that tone in there, but it becomes much softer. All right. That is just, that is just so much fun to do that. And you get, uh, you know, some heavy, heavy color on there that is uh, pretty wild. You know, can get you pretty well, but those backgrounds they work. They work so well, and one of the things that they work so well with is, you know, they go in just about anybody's home because they have just about every color in there. So it's really a lot of fun. Okay, let's get going here. Let's take some of our yellows, maybe an orange. Let's do kind of an orange today. I'm running out of yellow here, and let's just spark up some of this nice because you know this violets and stuff. Heading into some yellow oranges and stuff here might be kind of pretty as a nice, you know, contrast and stuff to it here. That's kind of neat. And what I'm doing is just kind of impressionistic kind of feel of the flowers kind of thing here. Um, and, uh, 
you know, just pushing that on. I'm going to paint a rose right in here for you, and then we'll just paint some of the other stuff right around it. Um, we can push some of this, and we'll pick up some of that yellow. We'll leave that violet down there. You can sometimes, because it's nice and heavy color, and the acrylics will stay wet here for just a bit. We can push that rose shape in there. We can take some the blue and some of this violet, nice cool color, and push in some of the... See, you can physically... And so what I do is I tap, and then I lift the pressure of the brush as I come here. And I'm physically... I can um, create here, uh, physically create some of the shape or the feeling of the rose. So you start to really see what a rose is, see? You start to really see the rose. So here, and we'll push in a little more color into that. Let's just push a bit of that color into some of these areas. I'm always a big advocate of traveling color and pushing color and moving color. You know, I like that kind of stuff. Let's take some of these colors, these two colors right here. And sometimes I imagine like, okay, this shadow of the bowl, if I'm painting contemporary and I just pull out right where that right where that shadow is and stuff. So the viewer sees that color continuing out, carrying out. So it's right where that shadow, so it's like the shadow explodes out the side of the rose and continues on that side. I like to do that. I like, there's all kinds of things I like to do. I <laughs> change things up. I'm going to take some of this gray right in some of my yellows and stuff here. And this is going to give me a nice neutral color um, that is, and I can add more yellow if I want to lean it warmer. But it's a nice neutral color to start building my rose here that I might want to paint the rose. I might want to touch more yellow here and there in it, up here at the top. But uh, let's just keep going. So we'll take some of this light color here and we'll build. Uh, sometimes I start, you know, build the bowl a lot. Sometimes I jump right out and start building. And I, it's gonna take me a while because there's so much color on the surface here and it's still wet. I have to build it. I have to stroke it several times, or actually, you know, I have to put on the color like this and then go back, load the brush again, and put it on again to start building color. And this is what makes these roses a little bit more textured and heavier than one of the last ones we did, you know, so it makes them feel a little different. Their structure is a little different because I build them and I build them and I build them. And I lift up and I just kind of. Uh, you know, I don't try to, I try to n not take too many strokes, but I kind of build the rose with strokes here. Drawing it. It's what Sargent said, right? Each stroke is a drawing stroke. Now, I've come up a little high. I'm going to open that rose back up. I'm going to push that back. And I'm going to reset my darks right back up in there. And that opens that rose a bit more and that looks, uh, that feels a little better here. There we go. That's a little better. That uh, I'm going to let that... Uh, well, let me put some shadowy marks out here first of what could be out here. There. And I'm going to let that tack up a bit. And uh, I'll go back up over to my white, the yellow and white here. And let's just put on an idea of a couple blossoms out here. Just real casual there, like that. I like these little blossoms like that. We could, since I'm running out of the out of the uh, yellow, we could start to switch it over to the orange a bit. <laughs> here. Push some of that in. Let's push a little. That orange kind of color looks kind of nice too. Here. And let some of those just become more orange back down here. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Trying different colors. And so it's kind of, you know, one of the things that forces you into different colors is as you're running out of colors on your palette. So if I did decide to do one more, ooh, I'm almost out of yellow. And so I'd have to shift over everything that I do. And that's not hard. We can do that. But let's go more of this peachy kind of color here. 
it's kind of a pretty little blossom with these uh, yellow with this yellow here let's go a little bit lighter right in here maybe a maybe turn this more into a bud right there like that we'll do that little heavier one right here just like that push that in and out and I leave these you know when I'm painting really casual like this I leave these things just really understated really casual you know just um, just hardly there that's that's the ticket for me it's just kind of like don't overdo them here let's just reshape that nice peachy kind of color that comes from a little more red into that yellow that's kind of a nice pretty one let's put some of that color into our rose and that will give you some harmony right that gives you some harmony there you can see that start to happen now let's build let's build lights right up on top of that don't go too white too fast because then you'd have your rose will become flat so slowly build it up lighter here take a new paper towel kind of you know I had one of the comments and I understand that they're just like wow you wipe off a lot of paint and yeah there's a certain amount of that where I will do that because I'm adjusting it and I'm painting it but I'm looking at a, at a painting here you know when I started out, the minimum that I'd sold a painting like this for would be $50. You know, today they run upwards of $300 uh, for a painting that's like this. So if I put out a grand total, and I used to, I, I priced this out one time. I, was, I sold this one painting for $650, and I used a grand total of $1.50 worth of paint painting it. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. These are not like the more expensive oils. These are your acrylics that are... And they're not super, super, yes, they are, you know, they're not a crafter's acrylic, definitely, because they're not uh, in bottles and they're, you know, but they are, are not the super huge high-priced ones there, too. So you can do some nice work and uh, build some nice things. And, yes, you may wipe off color every once in a while. I don't worry about that because, you know, I'm going to sell this painting for so much. And... Even if you sell this painting for $25 and you use $3 worth of paint into it, that's nothing, really. You know, that's really nothing as far as the cost of something, you know. Let's build a little more light. Build up just, just keep building more and more white into here. Building more and more light right up into there. Sometimes lift back, pick up some of that and lift off a bit of the extra color and so you're doing a rose here that's a very what I call a chunky rose it's uh, I build the color and I build the color and I build the color by building with strokes laying on thicker and thicker and thicker color it's a little different way than what we just did using some of the uh, open medium and only stroking once or twice and and uh, trying not to do too much and here I'm building color it's I always say, you know, you're building the foundation of a, building the foundation here of a beautiful flower. And, and uh, you know, you don't want to, uh, or you want to get all these colors and thicknesses and stuff going on in it. See, I like this, even just taking it off like that, revealing that shadow. Get a little bit of that yellowy red right in there, you know gives you a different feel for the rose. The whole rose changes shapes and forms. Um, how you build it here and leave some of these strokes and shadows and stuff coming through. So, you know, let's look at it this way too. You know, you notice how wet everything is staying here. Now I haven't added the open medium. Now the open medium one I did a while ago is still wet and it'll be wet for several hours. But if you if you're an acrylic painter and, you know, everything that I'm doing on this board here still, see, is wet. And that's because I'm using a lot of paint. So if you're in a real, in an area and you keep having a problem with, and this is, and this guy's is probably the biggest problem with acrylic painters. You know, they always write, my paint's dry too fast. Well, I always write, use more paint. 
thicker paint dries really slow and you keep adding thin water or if you've got a cheap acrylic they add cheap acrylics are about 50 percent water did you know that and so cheaper acrylics can really dry fast because they're mostly water but then there's some manufacturers that make nice acrylics that make them to dry fast because people want it to dry fast so you may not be using an acrylic that is made to to do the techniques that you want to do but also you know you can always make an acrylic dry slower just by using more that's the bottom line just use more paint and you'll you'll get better you know you'll get better results here that's the majority of when people have problems is they don't use enough paint now i just was talking there and built this one out just a little too far so i'm just going to lift it back off here just lift off some of that extra paint see it's a <laughs> it's a building process i just lift off some of the extra paint and reveal my shadow again or shoot a little bit more shadow right back up in there and uh you know, get that nice look that you want to have. So, oh, I like that. And I'll build some more light right up here. Here, a lighter two-stroke. Maybe leave a bit of it. Let's leave a little bit more light. Pull down towards the base. So I'm just building a rose, see? And so I have my bowl, my center, my bowl, and my outside petals here. And I'm just building them and uh, getting the look that I want here. There we go. And let's just build a little more light. I might not have I might not have enough shadow in there to support another stroke of light. So I'm just going to take this and do a removing stroke. Remove some of that. Soften it out a bit. I can pull down just a bit to make sure I get some of the movement that I want. And then I can strike on my lighter stroke and get the kind of petal look that I want. I want that bowl to come back there like that. That makes kind of a pretty rose. Let's, um, boy, we ain't got much lit yellow left. So we can use a little bit of our lights here and just hit the highlights some of these other ones let's hit a little edge pedal there that'll bring that right forward see how the little edges bring stuff forward that works out pretty well let's um take a little red touch of black and some red violet here let's add a little darker contrasting stroke into the center here makes it kind of nice there I'm going to rinse some of that out of the brush here for a minute. Look at that nice little blue. And that's a, the other thing here too is you always create harmony. Let's take a bit of that blue here, kind of that blue, a little bit of the violet into that. This has to come close. This has to look like a gray blue. Touch a bit of it here over into the shadow side of some of your stuff. And that harmonizes. See how it creates just a little bit of that color moving through your painting. But it's a cool color, so it goes to the cool side of the rose here. And I'm going to do what I call uh, sink it. Uh, what I do, I'll rinse my brush here, and I'll take my warmer light here, and I'll sink that blue into the flower just by stroking the warmth over it. So it becomes more of a, a, a nice little accent as opposed to a, a major type of stroke or something like that. So I sink that in. I'm not going to do that on the, the little blossoms. They're fine. And um, yeah, so let's take some uh, on those little blossoms. Since we're out of our yellows, which I like, let's just take a lighter kind of whitish red color here. Push some of that in. See if we like that kind of pink color there. And we'll push some of that right in here, some of that right in there. There, like that. And you know, I'm going to need a tiny bit of yellow here because I got to make green. So I've <laughs> got to put out a little bit. 
just a little. And that's all we're going to use. That wasn't too smart to use up all that yellow so fast. So, But you can say, you know, like I told you in some of the earlier videos, when you're painting with the six color set, the two colors that you might consider buying an extra one of is the white and the yellow. You use up a lot of those. The others will last you for a long time. But the white and the yellow kind of go kind of quickly. So we'll tap a little more yellow into that. And a little bit out into there. Just, see, you just kind of blur that all out. It looks like you know what you're doing. Okay, let's take some of this right into here. Let's add a bit of blue, a bit of black. Black makes the, the uh, really the uh, olive color. A little bit of blue will take it over slightly more to the green here. You can tone it with a red, cool it with a red violet here. Let's just put on a bit of green. I'll use a softer one here first, then I'll paint for some more contrast. Here, just kind of dancing this around a bit. Here, just to push that green, green yellow around. Let's add a little red and black. A little bit of yellow. Make some nice stem colors here. Pulling through. There, like that. I like to just blur those out so they're not always perfect there. Let's take a little more blue, some yellow, make a different, a little more festive green here. Add a few little touches of that. It's kind of a pretty little green. More of a yellow green, brighter. Kind of a pretty little green. Boy, does that give you some different looks today that we've painted on roses. We've got to go over and do some landscapes and stuff like that too for I'm going to show you some real small miniature landscapes and uh, fun stuff. Maybe a small little seascape. Some more birds. I love painting wildlife and stuff too. There, around. Let's go. Uh, Go back in here, add a bit of that red, which really kind of tones it down. It's a bit warmer because I used the naphtha red, but you won't see it too much here. Let's just push in a bit of that contrast there. Right around this center rose here, we'll just do a little negative painting. See how it just pops it out. That's just contrast. You know, how much you do, that's your choice. It's just good contrast there. And we'll pop a little bit out. Maybe I'll take a smaller mark of it right up over here. Create a little bit of the contrast there. That's kind of nice. All different kinds of ways. Now you can open your rows up. You can go back with your darks and open it up. I kind of like that at, you know, at that point there. You can add a lighter or a darker. I do like to give a little. I've been doing that lately here for the last couple weeks. I just like to. My little vein lines, maybe a mark or two here of some light little, and this is where I like to do that, think of uh, the little kind of pettit marks, you know, little marks to, because we've got all this movement and stuff into the background. It just makes it kind of pretty. You can use a, a little more white into it too and create like little white flowers, little Edelweiss or something like that just create the impressions of them, you know, of other little uh, lights, movements, flowers, kinds of stuff. This gives a, a different type of look. Whatever you want. Let's turn this into a little bit more of a flower here. Here, like that. There we go. Just a bit of that around. Makes it kind of fun. Just, and you know, sparks it all up. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so, boy, I did, I did four of those this morning. <laughs> I did four of those this morning. Of course, we'll release them over time. You're watching them out over time and everything. But you see, in this morning, in, in less than, in a little less than two hours, so this one took, what, 24 minutes and stuff here. So, a little less than two hours, you know, you can paint four really nice, you know, little presents and stuff here and, um, you know, have have a good time with them. And, you know, I always tell them, you know, some people say, well, I can only sell it for $25. Well, 
well, that's twenty-five dollars for something like this for a board that you got about a buck in, a buck in paint needed to it. So twenty-three dollars, two of those an hour. That's forty-six dollars an hour. You know that you're making just painting little tiny boards like that. And then when you get more well known, that price, that profitability goes way up. But that's not bad. You know, painting these little designs like this, and uh, you know, sell them for a good price. The thing is. Getting through them and being able to paint them in that 20, 30 minutes, you know, don't play with them. I know that's easy to say, but you got to quit playing with them. You got to just move it on and, uh, you know, because most people won't notice. Most people won't notice if there's a problem with it. They'll just look at the whole design and see the beauty of the whole design and they take it from there, you know. Okay, there's another one. We got a lot more coming. You know, we'll get them all done. We got a lot of these to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, hope you're having fun. Don't forget to hit that that like button, subscribe to the channel, and go visit us on MeWe and see us over on JansenArtStudio.com. We have a lot more going on. And post some of your stuff over on MeWe stuff. We're having a good time over there, okay? All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one.